Welcome to Redondo Beach, California. But in the 1990 film Men at Work, this is Las Playas, California. And today we're gonna to be driving around Redondo Beach and Hermosa Beach and a few other spots, trying to find the locations for the Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez comedy, Men at Work. So, let's go see what we can find. Now this is where the movie begins, near the intersection of Esplanade and Vista Del Mar. Maxwell Potterdam is standing right about here with some binoculars, staring out into the ocean, watching as they dump all of the toxic waste into the water. And a few moments later, Jack Berger comes walking up and tells him that he doesn't want to have any part of it anymore. He's not going to help him. He wants out of the deal. And the way that we can really tell where they were standing is when Jack Berger walks away and gets into his car. So Jack's car would have been parked right here just on the other side of this lamp post. At the time, this wasn't a parking lot and you can't really see it now because all the cars, but right down there is the curve in the curb. You can see that in the movie. Now the way that we can really tell that this is where they were standing is by those buildings across the street. Now this one here on the corner has obviously been torn down and rebuilt, but the ones across from that are the same. And notice these four garages right here you can see those in the movie. So the camera starts looking this way and then pans over to the right. And this is where we see the sign for Las Playas. Now this next location is still a bit of a mystery at this point. It's the apartment building of James and Carl. We see the exterior of their apartment building and the camera then pans up and we see Carl in the window with a pair of binoculars looking at the apartment building across the street, which is Susan's apartment. Now, I have an idea of the area of where these buildings are or were. The problem is, is so much stuff around here has been torn down and replaced with little mansions or nicer apartment buildings. So I don't even know if these buildings still exist, but I'm gonna to continue to look for them throughout this video and hopefully by the end, I'll be able to tell you where they are or where they were, but no promises. 225 Avenue I in Redondo Beach. This is where the Jack Berger campaign headquarters was. We see James and Carl pull up in the trash truck and stop to get the trash. And as you can probably tell, the building that was used for the Jack Berger headquarters has since been torn down and replaced with a much larger building However, the apartments that you see behind the Jack Berger headquarters, those are still there. You just have to go around to the other side behind this building and you'll see those apartments. And there is one more thing that's still here. When they're inside of the campaign headquarters and the camera's looking out the window, you can see that Trader Joe's across the street. And it's inside the campaign headquarters where we find out that Susan is connected to Jack. We also see Jack freaking out watching the hitmen that are watching him. Have you ever noticed the license plate on Biff and Mario's car? Now this next scene was filmed entirely right here on 10th Street where it meets Beach Drive in Hermosa Beach, California. And in this scene, you can see the Sea Sprite Hotel, which amazingly is still here. So the trash truck comes off of Beach Drive, which is really just an alley, and it makes a right onto 10th Street and then parks right about here. James and Carl then walk over to this corner to pick up the trash and they're standing here on 10th Street talking about girl problems and life problems. And that's when we get introduced to Mike and Jeff, the two cops that give James and Carl trouble throughout the movie. Now, like I already mentioned throughout this entire scene, you can see the Sea Sprite Hotel in the background. And that's how you know where this was filmed. And it was right about here where the famous golf clap scene takes place. After that, Mike and Jeff get back on their bikes and make a left onto Beach Drive. At the beginning of the picking up trash montage, we see a set of trash cans fly past this house located at 754 Avenue B in Redondo Beach. As you can see, the house hasn't changed too much since the movie was made. However, the houses to the left and to the right of this house have both been torn down and replaced with much bigger homes. 
This is Good Stuff Restaurant in Hermosa Beach, and this is where Carl and James come to have lunch. And they sit right here talking about how one day they're gonna open a surf shop on the Strand, and they talk about whose fault it is that they've yet to open that surf shop. On the corner of Diamond Street and Pacific Coast Highway, this is the Redondo Beach Police Station, but in the movie, it's the Las Playas Police Station, and we see Jack pull up in front of the police station, very frantic. He runs inside because he wants to confess. He wants to tell them about how he's involved in the whole scandal with the dumping of the drums into the ocean, and he's got a tape to prove it. Now, a few things have changed here. The police station has been remodeled. There's now a patio over here on the left side that wasn't there at the time. But for the most part, you can match things up with the police station that you see in the movie. So after finding out that starting tomorrow, they're gonna have to be riding around with their boss's brother-in-law, James and Carl are relaxing when they hear a commotion across the way and they notice Jack roughing up Susan in her apartment. Carl decides to take matters into his own hands and he grabs his pellet gun and shoots Jack in the butt. Little do they know that a few moments later, a couple of hitmen show up, murder Jack, and then load him into the trunk of their car. So Biff and Mario come out of this alley right here and then they hit the bump and the drum comes out of the trunk of the car and it comes rolling right over to here. And so Biff and Mario continue down the alley and this building was not here at the time. There's a house that you can see in the movie. It's still there. It's just on the other side of this building. If you walk down the alley a little bit, you can see it. And then so the drum rolls right over to here. And the way that we know that is this box. You can see this box in the movie. It's got a uh, Jack Berger poster on it. And that's how we know that it was right about here where the drum was containing Jack Berger's body. The next day, James and Lewis start their shift riding with Lewis, who's their boss's brother-in-law. And we see the trash truck coming down the street right here on Catalina coming away from Avenue G. Now, after some back and forth between the three of them, James says some stuff to upset Lewis, and Lewis ends up taking a swing at James, which causes the trash truck to swerve, and we see it swerving down the street right here on Catalina headed towards Avenue E. So it's no longer an eating establishment, but right over here on the corner, used to be the restaurant where Carl, James, and Lewis come to have lunch. And this is where James learns just how much Lewis loves his French fries. Now the way that we can tell that this is where the restaurant was is by some of the buildings that you see across the street through the window. Now this has been a few different restaurants through the years. It was a Cajun restaurant. At one time it was a Cafe 50s. I think that might actually be the clock from Cafe 50s. Don't quote me on that, I could be wrong, but I think. But it was right there in that window where the three of them are sitting and having lunch. And it was roughly right about here where probably my favorite scene in the movie happens. It's such a stupid line, but it just cracks me up. You're a stupid man. You're a stupid little man. It's made me laugh ever since I was a little kid. And so they're standing right here with the body of Jack Berger, trying to figure out what they're gonna do. And then trouble comes around the corner. Right over here, the two officers on bikes turn off of Esplanade onto Avenue F. And now James and Carl are really in trouble. 
So Biff and Mario are now in an alley trying to find the body that they lost. And look, Suzuki Samurai. And that night, James and Carl decide the best thing to do is to bring Lewis and the dead body back to their apartment. And then Carl decides that it's a good idea to go across the street to Susan's apartment and try and get info out of her about Jack. And then James and Lewis decide to order a pizza and then kidnap the pizza delivery boy. Meanwhile, Biff and Mario are taking a little dinner break in the parking lot of a liquor store. And I believe that this is Catalina Liquor on the corner of Diamond and Catalina in Redondo Beach. Notice those fluorescent lights above the door? And then just to the left of the door, you have a small window. And then to the right of the door, you have some larger windows. This seems to match up with what we see in the movie. Carl and Susan decide to go out for a drive and they're being followed by James and the Pizza Boy and Lewis and the Dead Body, and they're being followed by Frost and Luzinski and also Biff and Mario. So they're speeding down the street, everybody's chasing each other, and they blow right through an intersection and pass by a cop who ends up flipping around and taking off after them. And that was right here at the intersection of Esplanade and Knob Hill Avenue in Redondo Beach. And it looks a little bit different. The street lights are different. There's no longer a traffic signal here, but mostly the house on the corner, which can clearly be seen in the movie, has been torn down and replaced with a much bigger house. However, there's still a few things here that are the same. That's how I was able to figure out where this was. Now, if we look just to the left of that house on the corner, the house right next to it, it's pretty dark in the movie, but if you pause it and turn up the brightness, you can see that it is the same house. Now, if we look to the right of the house on the corner, the house right next door, that window in the movie has an awning over it. It no longer has the awning, but if you look on Google Street View, there's the awning. And then if we look just beyond that house, you can see a house with a pointed roof with some windows right below it. There's the pointed roof and there's the windows. So the cop flips around right here in the intersection and then takes off after him going this way down Esplanade. And they're just going back and forth on Esplanade. Sometimes the ocean is on the right side of them and sometimes it's on the left side of them. And that's because they're just going back and forth right here. So a lot of things have changed here, but it was basically right here in front of me where that merry-go-round was, where he ties up the two officers and leaves them for everybody to find him. And we get a better shot of this at the end of the movie. You'll be able to tell a little bit better where they were. But just to give you a better idea right now, this is roughly where the merry-go-round was. And then right over here is where their truck was stopped with the police car right behind it, just on the other side of these cars. It's right here on the beach with the Hermosa Pier in the background where Carl and Susan are walking and having their impromptu date. They then walk over here and sit down somewhere over here in the sand. I believe you can see this in the background behind them. So Susan and Carl are sitting on the beach while Lewis and James and the pizza boy stop to get some coffee and try and figure out what their next move is. Meanwhile, Frost and Lazitsky are messing with Susan's car to mess with Carl. So we're back on the beach next to the Hermosa Pier and Carl and Susan are here on the sand kissing when they're approached by Biff and Mario. And of course, Biff and Mario make them get up and they're walking them through the beach and you can see that they're in between the Hermosa Pier and a lifeguard station. And it was right here in between that lifeguard station and the Hermosa Pier where they stop and Mario ends up tasing Biff. Carl and Susan then make a run for it and they get right over here when they stop and they see Susan's car blow up. Now, as you can see, this looks a lot different. There's no longer a parking lot here and there's now a couple of new apartments in place of the ones that you see in the movie. So I'm kind of wondering if the two houses that you see in the movie, if they actually got torn down or if they just got blocked by these new houses. So I'm going to walk back here and see. And you know what? It looks like they didn't get torn down. They just got blocked. 
I don't know if you can tell, but this house or building right here is the one that you see in the movie. You can match up the, uh, the stairs and the balcony right here. So this little park that I'm walking in right now, this is the parking lot where Susan's car explodes. And again, the buildings that you see in the movie, they didn't get torn down. They just got blocked by these two buildings. The buildings that you see in the movie are directly behind these two. Carl and Susan run into Jeff and Mike in the park, and as they're taking their police car, they get spotted by Biff and Mario. Carl then decides it would be a good idea to drive the police car right into Biff and Mario, making their getaway car completely useless. All the bad guys show up and take Susan and Carl, but luckily, Lewis and James show up just in time to see them getting taken away. So they take Carl and Susan to the Chem Life factory where they plan to kill them. Now in real life, this building is located at 100 Pier S Avenue in Long Beach, California. Now the other side of this building was used in Terminator 2. It's where the truck comes off of the highway and then crashes through the gates of the factory. But the back side of this building was the Chem Life factory and it still looks pretty similar to how it did in the movie. Anyways, they lock Carl and Susan up in some yellow drums and they're gonna throw them in the ocean. James is able to save Carl, but they still have to save Susan. Luckily, they hear her yelling from inside the drum and Carl is able to set her free. They then defeat the henchmen with a pellet gun and defeat Maxwell Potterdam with two cans of spray paint and a pellet gun. Maxwell Potterdam III falls into the dirty water that he polluted and then this happens. Oh, wait, that's a different movie. Anyways, they defeat the bad guys and everybody lives happily ever after with no consequences. Even though they held two cops at gunpoint, tied them up in the park and left them for dead and kidnapped a pizza delivery boy. The next morning, we see that Jeff and Mike are still locked up in the park when a dog stops to pay them a visit. At this point, we get a better shot of the park and you can see that there's two walkways that come together right next to a lamppost and a bench. Now again, things have changed here a little bit at this park, but you can see the two walkways that come together and there's that lamppost and the bench. And that's how we can tell where that merry-go-round used to be. Well, it's the end of the video and I hate to say it, but I wasn't able to find James and Carl and Susan's apartment. I tried really hard. I looked a lot of different places, but I just couldn't do it. Now, like I mentioned, there are some clues in the movie. There's one scene where it shows everybody leaving the apartment and the camera shooting from on the other side of a statue. Now that appears to be the Tim Kelly surfing lifeguard statue. But when I looked at it a little bit closer, you can see right here, if you look at the statue and then compare it with the one in the movie, it's similar, but it's not the same. The position of the arm is different. The height of the wave is a little bit different. So it's very similar, but I don't think it's the same statue. Also, if you look at this statue and then look at the scenery around it, obviously this isn't where their apartments would have been because this is at the end of the Hermosa Beach Pier. Now the statue has been moved and supposedly it used to be somewhere right here in this area. But if you look at the scenery right over here, this obviously doesn't match up with what you see in the movie either. This wouldn't be where their apartments were. So what I think happened, and this is just my opinion, I think that the statue that we see in the movie is a replica. I don't think it's the actual statue. I think they made a replica to try and give it a beach feel. And I have a feeling that those apartments actually aren't here in the South Bay. Again, this is just my opinion. I don't know for sure. Maybe somebody watching this video knows a little bit better and they can let us know. But for now, it's gonna remain a mystery. All right, that is gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.